Hey everybody, my name is David Sibelberg and today we're going to be covering branching workflows. Now, what this means is we're going to be able to take one workflow and at some point during that workflow, there may be a split in possibilities. So either you might run into a situation where you have to pause and wait because you don't know when to expect a certain outcome or when to expect a certain document to come your way before you can continue. Or maybe you don't know how you're going to continue based on the verdict of a certain case. So maybe you have a trial date with your client for, let's say, personal injury, and you may change what you need to do based on whether they are found guilty or not guilty from that trial. Uh, so in this case, we're going to open up our first workflow here for PI1. This is the starting point, no matter what the case is. Uh, and the initial event that we're starting with is the date the client was retained. Um, from here, we have some very standard uh, tasks, you know, schedule a consultation with the client, meet the client, draft the complaint, uh, whatever your general tasks are. And then we have the schedule a hearing or the actual trial that eventually happens. Uh, so we set this last task uh, is actually to apply appropriate next workflow, whatever that may mean. You can word it however you like. Just make sure you set this task to be pretty far in the future so it doesn't become overdue too quickly for no reason. Now, you want to be a little bit uh, detailed in the description of this task to really hold the hand of whoever is handling the tasks or activities for this case. So this last task literally is telling the uh, the user there, uh, you know, apply uh, personal injury to A if we win the case or if they're, you know, not guilty, let's say. Uh, and then apply personal injury to B if we lose the case or they are found guilty, let's say. Um, and these are two completely separate additional workflows. So I went ahead and made a workflow uh, PI2A with the description to make sure that no one uh, makes the mistake of using this first, only apply this workflow if we won the PI case. The initial event for this is the date the case was won. Then further on down, you have the follow-up tasks. Okay, once we won the court, uh, sorry, once we won the case, to collect the winnings from the court and disperse those winnings between the bills and the client, and then we get to celebrate. Awesome. The other alternative is we, you know, lose the case. And here we have the date the case was lost and a few varying uh, different tasks here uh, in this case if we lose. So, but that's not going to happen. So don't worry about that. Uh, now to actually go ahead and use these, I'm going to go ahead and jump into one of my matters. I'll just head into uh, my Sam versus Fung case here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and apply that first workflow. So we just took on the case. We're going to apply the workflow select the workflow and you can see the descriptions are all right here next to the workflow title. So there's very little excuse for applying the wrong workflow there. So I'm going to go ahead and say PI one initial steps apply. I'm going to let uh, practice Panther know the date the client was retained. So today's date is fine for right now. Go on down and delegate the workout as normal and save. So now we have a giant task list of all the things we need to do for this case. And, you know, we're going to be completing them as we go. Done, done, done. And then, you know, we have our trial date somewhere in there and we go to trial and we have won the case. Amazing. So now we have to apply the appropriate next workflow. Okay. So which one to do? We won the case. So we need to apply PI to a, so I come right up here, new apply workflow again. Select PI2A and apply. Put in the date the case was one. Again, I'm just going to leave it as today's date for right now. Delegate the other work out to other individuals to uh, you know collect the money and disperse the money. Save. And now I have the next series of uh, steps that I needed to do uh, branching from that initial workflow. So you can see how you can use this to create many different stems and trees, depending on the different varying situations. Or if you have to wait for certain documents to come in, you can create a second workflow off of that point of receiving those documents. And that's it. Enjoy.